What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to load a UI file into your app for PyQt5 and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, I'm going to show you how to load a UI file into your PyQt5 app. Up until now, we've been opening the designer, creating our GUI, generating a UI file, and then converting that UI file into a Python file, and then doing stuff with the Python file. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the UI file and then just leave it alone. We're not going to convert it into a Python file. Instead, we're going to create another Python file and load that UI file into the Python file. And the reason why we do that is because you've seen in past videos, sometimes we want to go back to the designer and make a change. Well, when we do that, it generates a new UI file. And if we convert that into a Python file, it overrides all the other Python code we've written. So we have to rewrite our app all over again. And that's not optimal. Instead, a better way to do it is to have two separate files your UI file over here, your Python file over here, and then have the Python file import that UI file. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. So, so we're going to build this very basic app. It just says, you know, enter a thing. This says hello, John, right? And then we're going to modify this. And I'm going to show you how to do all these things I just talked about. So let's head over to our terminal. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other PyQt5 videos. So check that out if you haven't so far. OK, so I'm in my C PyQt5 directory. We've got our virtual environment turned on. Let's open the designer. So we just type designer. And this pops up. Let's create a new main window. And let me resize this stuff. OK, so we're going to keep this very simple. We just want a button. So let's do something like that. And let's say submit. And maybe we want to change the size of this guy. So I'm going to go over here and click this and go 16. All right, so we've got a nice big font now. Now we also want, let's see, some sort of box that we can type in. So let's come down here and let's find a text edit box. That looks good. Something like that. And then we want a label on top. So let's grab a label, bring this over, something like that. I don't know. And inside of here, let's just say, you know, enter your name. Dot, 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 right? And we can come over here and make this bigger if we want, no big deal. Okay, so that looks good, good enough for our purposes here. So let's go ahead and save this, create our first UI file. So let's come up here, go file, save as. And we want to be in our C PyQt5 directory right here. And let's name this a uh, loader <laughs> or load UI or yeah, load UI, whatever. We're going to load the UI. So we'll call this load UI. So now normally in the past, we would have came over here and went pi UI C5 dot export that loader load UI dot UI. And we would have then output it as load UI dot pi. And that would have taken that UI file, converted it into a Python file called loadui.py that we would have then just played with. We're not going to do that now. Instead, we're going to come over to Sublime, and I'm just going to create a new file. And let's go file save as. And in our PyQt5 directory, the same directory where that UI file is sitting, let's call this loadui.py. And you can name it anything you want. It really doesn't matter. So if we want to, we can open up that other UI file. So Let's go load UI.UI. Here it is. So this is the thing that gets output by the Qt designer, right? So there's a bunch of stuff. Now we're actually going to have to look through here to find some information in order to link these two files up. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. First, we need to create sort of the guts of this Python file that we're going to be using here. So we have to import several things. So let's go from pyqt5.qt widgets. We need to import all of the widgets that we're going to be using in our app. And so the first one was Q main window. We also need Q application. That's basically any PyQt app needs a Q application. And then after that, we just need to come through here and import all of the widgets that we use. And if we don't remember what they are, we can come over here and look. If we click on it right here, well, it says what it is. It's a Q label. So over here, we need to import Q label, right? What else did we have? We had Q text edit. So we need to import that. Q text edit. And then finally, we had one more thing, which was this button, and that's a Q push button. Now, the more you work with these things, Q push button, the more you won't have to look it up. You'll just remember what they are. But if you don't know and you need to look it up, that's what you do. So, okay, so that's good there. We also now need to import that UIC file. So let's go from pyqt5. We want to import 
UIC. And finally, we need system. So let's import sys. Okay, so that's all the things we need. So now we just need to create a basic app structure. So first we need a class and we can name this anything we want. I'm just gonna name it UI because that's what we're doing. We're building a UI and this inherits always Q main window, right? And then inside of here, we need to do some object oriented classy things. So underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore, self. And then here we need super, and then we need to pass in the name of this class, which is UI, that's what we named it right there, right? So super UI, and we also need to pass in self, and then we need to pass in another underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore function. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So now we need to load our actual UI file. So let's go load the UI file. And to do that, we call UIC, which we imported right here, right? Dot load UI. Now this is a capital U and a lowercase i. Sometimes I accidentally put UI just because, I don't know, my brain does that. It's definitely a lowercase i. And inside of here, we need two arguments. We need the name of the file itself. So we called this load UI dot UI, and we also need to pass self. So that's it. So load UI dot UI, which is this file right here. And now we're gonna load it. Okay, so that's good here. Now we also need to show the app. So to do that, we just call self.show. We've looked at that in past videos. So, okay, that works there. Now, we also need to sort of, I don't know, let's call it initialize the app, right? And to do that, we create an app and set that equal to Q application, which again, we imported right here, right? So Q application, and then we just need to pass in sys.argv, okay? And now let's go UI window equals UI, which is what we named our class here, right? And then finally, we just go app.execute. So that's underscore, and that's a function. Okay, so that should work. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. Let's see if that works. So let's go Python, load UI.py. And when we do, boom, here we go. And so just that easy. So very cool. Now, how do we actually make these things work? In the past, we converted the UI file to a Python file and then did all of the voodoo in the Python file but we don't have that layout like we did in other videos. All we have is, you know, this stuff. So how do we do stuff in our UI file from this Python file? Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, up here, let's sort of define our widgets. This will allow us to sort of recognize the things that are in this file, right? Uh, but from in here. So we have three things. So let's go self dot something, self dot something, and self dot something. So we've got a label. So let's just call this self dot label. And we've also got a text edit box. So I'll call that text edit. And we've also got a button, a push button. So I'll just call this button. So now we need to set these equal to something. Well, we need to find them, find them in the UI file. So we can use the self dot find child function. And these widgets are children of the main parent app. So we wanna find them, find child. And then the first one is a label. So let's come through here and look, and let's just kind of find our label. So Q text edit, Q label. So the thing is a Q label. So we can copy that and paste that in here. And then we need to designate the actual name of it. So over here, it says the name is label. So we just copy that, boom, just like that. So Go ahead and copy this a couple more times. And we do the same thing for each of these. So now text edit, just come over here and look for your text edit. Here it is, Q text edit. So we can copy this, boom. And then the name of that one, because we didn't change the name in the designer is just text edit. So we'll pop that in there. And finally the button is, let's see, where is that? Q push button, there it is. Boom. And the name of that guy is push button. Boom. Okay, so now we have these things defined, we can do anything we want with them right here in this file. So let's, uh, you know, do something. Right? So what do we want to do? Well, whenever we push the button, we want something to happen. So let's go self dot button. That's what we named this guy, right? And we want to call the clicked function. You know, in past videos, we called clicked equals, and then we called the function here. I'm just gonna connect it here with clicked 
dot connect. Same way to do it, just slightly easier. And let's call self dot clicker. So we have this functions clicker. We haven't actually created it yet. So let's come down here and do that. So outside of here, let's define clicker. We want to pass in self. And what do we want to do? Well, let's change that label, the text in that label to whatever we typed in in the text edit field. So we can do that. So let's go self dot label dot set text. And we set text for labels all the time. This is how you do it. You call the set text function. And let's create an F string and let's go hello there. And then inside of here, we want to pass in self dot text edit dot in the text edit, of course, is because we called this thing self dot text edit right here, right? So here we want to use the two plain text function. And that just grabs whatever's in that text box, right? And outputs it right there. Okay, so that's good. And now we probably want to change this self dot text edit to, you know, delete whatever was in there. So let's go self dot text edit dot set plain text and set that equal to nothing. All right, so that should do the trick. Let's head back over to the terminal and run this. But before we do that, if you like this video, and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeb.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Whoa, weird commercial. Anyway, let's run this guy, python load ui.py. And here we go. Now, if we type in John, we click submit. It says, hello there, John. Okay, so that works. Strictly speaking, that's everything we need to know. But what if we now want to make a change to our UI file? How do we do that? Well, we just head back over here to our designer. And let's say we want to add a new button. So let's come up here and grab another button, slap this guy in here. Right? And maybe we want this one to say clear the text box, something like that. Come over here, change this real quick. All right, so now we just come up here and file save, save it as the same thing it was before. And now we don't have to do anything else. In the past, we would have had to convert that UI file to a Python file, and it would have destroyed all of this stuff. But now these are two separate files, so we don't have to do anything at all. We can just run our Python file again. And when we do, boom, it pops up. We can type stuff in. This still does all this stuff. Now this doesn't actually do anything yet. If we want to integrate that, we then have to integrate it. So let's do that real quick. Come back up here. Let's call this self dot clear underscore button. And let's just copy all of this. Because we know it's going to be a Q push button, but the name of it's probably different. So if we come back here and let's close this and open it again. And that was load dot UI. And now we come down here and find that other button. So Q push button, push button. No, that's probably not it. Q push button, ah, push button underscore two. So we know that's the one. And we know because here's the text of it right there. Clear the text box, right? So, okay. So we just come down here and pop that in. All right. So now if we want to do something with this button, same deal, we can come right down here and go self dot clear underscore button dot clicked dot connect. And here, let's go self dot clear -er. <laughs> create a clearer function. That's a terrible name. And up here, we can just sort of define clearer, pass in self, and then do whatever we want. So let's say we want to clear this text box. And let's say we want to change this label back to what it is by default, which I don't even remember what it was, something like enter your name dot 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 something like that. All right, so let's go ahead and save this head back over here, run this guy. All right, so if we type in john and click submit, and maybe we click there, we don't click submit yet. But now we want to click this boom, that disappears, this changes. So try this again. Submit Hello there, john clear the text box. This goes back that close clear. And we're good to go. So that's how you sort of create a separate UI file and a separate Python file and integrate them together by loading the UI file, much cleaner way to do. And also just by looking at our code, here is our entire Python file. It's a lot less than when we convert this UI file into a Python file. And it's a gigantic file. 
and it's very complicated to read and there's so much stuff there, it's hard to wrap your brain around it all and sort of pick out things. But this, this is just one little class we've created that does everything we need. Very cool and pretty easy. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. You pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.